turned it. Okay. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. It's dark. Christ, it's subverted. Hello, and welcome to yet another episode of What the, the Fluff. I am Fluffy O Panda. And I am Ninja Dragon 5000, the third. She remembered her name this time, guys. Yay! And here on What the Fluff, we are going to be talking about weddings. What? But before we get to that, just, I know, I know it's tantalizing. It's teasing you. You just, you want to find out more. What possibly could two white girls have to say about weddings? Right? (laughs) (laughs) Just let me get my pumpkin spice latte. (laughs) But as they call it, what? PSL? Do they? You're Pumpkin. the one who's had it. Pumpkin spice. It doesn't taste that good. <laughs> I'm just saying. But like, they abbreviated it to like, let me get my PSL. Isn't that a soccer league? Premium Isn't that the IPL? League? Or is that a cricketing thing? Oh my God. Can we just? Winning! <laughs> what a great intro, guys. Winning an acronym. Woo! Sports. Ooh, board game. Copyright, that's mine. <laughs> Don't do it. That's mine. Do you hear me? Okay, just... So what are we talking about? Calm Summer Breeze over there. Ninja Dragon 5000 the third. <laughs> She's hungry. So, <laughs> as always, we usually start the show with some little bit of personal what the fluff stories. And I just I have to share this one because it really it really just blew me away. And not in a good way, as I'm sure this guy was hoping. But basically, I was, how do I say this? I was, I called into a call center for one of our local internet providers. And I was pretending to be a friend of mine, because her and her boyfriend are currently in Thailand. And I'm house-sitting for them. And So they, you were pretending to be her? Yes, I was pretending to be her, because obviously I couldn't pretend to be him. I was pretending to be her telling them that my boyfriend is now overseas for work and I need the Wi-Fi at home so I can work came up with this whole story right very believable I totally totally sound like my friend I don't but yeah so I started off this conversation with this guy telling him that the account is in my boyfriend's name eventually he started hitting on me at one point he asked when I was trying to check the router, he asked if he had me on my knees. It's not the kind of customer service you normally hope for. Well, <laughs> I don't, at least. <laughs> so, obviously, you know, deep down, I'm quite flattered because Fluff is single as fuck. But hey. Um, call me. But. Under the circumstances, with the only information that this guy knew about me, he knew that I had a boyfriend and he still tried it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, made me go, what the fuck? It had probably been a slow day at the office, so he was like... No, it wasn't actually. The reason why I was on hold for over an hour was because all of their routers across the country had updated. I think I'm giving myself away now. Had updated, so everyone in the country was calling them. It was not a slow day for that, brah. It was just something about my voice. Well, the fact that he had time to slip that in. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, so basically my what the fluff is all about just how nasty boys are. Nasty, nasty, nasty. 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 You're nasty. <laughs> Shut up, Crystal. <laughs> Put your leg down. <laughs> you nasty, nasty, You're Crystal. You're nasty. Damn. Yeah. My what the fluff mm. uh, comes with a little bit of road rage. Ooh. No, we've spoken about road rage before. But basically, it literally happened like last night. My boo and I are driving home from having a nice evening. And the way you started that, I felt like I had to start like strumming like, <laughs> on the old bass guitar. <laughs> so we're driving home. We had a nice evening stuffing our face with food. And he is a notorious backseat driver. Mm. So that, that makes me. Mm hmm. <laughs> so we're driving home 
Maybe just drink this real quick. <laughs> that is for the pleasure of our editor. <laughs> <laughs> Here at What the Fluff, we really, really love our team. We support our team. Tam's gonna drown. <laughs> As you were saying, he is so a back seat. Is this you getting back at him? Because when this airs, this is honey. the thing that okay. made me the most furious and like, what the hell are you doing? Uh-huh. Like, I can drive, bitch. <laughs> Let me drive. So we're at an intersection. We're she told me how to drive. Exactly. <laughs> and we're at an intersection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Intersection. And we're going to be turning right. So we have to turn right over two lanes. Mm hmm. So the arrow is flashing for us to turn, but I missed that arrow. But there's normally a little bit of time before the new cars start coming. Mm, mm. The cars start coming towards you. You can sort of duck through there. But there were no cars waiting, but there were cars coming towards the light. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> towards the light. So now I'm starting to turn, but then one of the cars, it's coming just a little bit too fast mm. for you to make that thing. Yep. I see this happening. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind people warning you, being like, just watch out for that over there, maybe. Mm-hmm. He shouts in my ear, don't go! Do? And I'm like, what is that going to do? So he shouts so loud, he gives me a fright. So mm. I jump and obviously jerk the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. So I'm like... Do you not think that you're going to cause an accident by yelling in my ear? Like, I saw the car coming. Thank you very much. I can I can do the driving thing. <laughs> I can put the pedal and to the And you're trying to avoid an accident by screaming in my ear. I don't think is very successful in trying to avoid an accident. Have you ever had the passenger who tried to grab the wheel? Yes. The very same guy <laughs> oh. has done that to me before. To oh, correct. I'm just looking at nasty, driver. nasty crystal over there. <laughs> <laughs> With his high kicks. Oh, we're going to have a camera on you. <laughs> so that we'll the audience the, can the see you. We'll have the producer cam. <laughs> so Chris can. cam. Chris cam. I'm sure that's a thing. So, in the mm. news recently, here in the Fair Cape, I uh, doing a Joey. I don't know which camera I'm looking at. In the Fair Cape, there was a story that this couple who had been dating for something like 16, 17 years, they were planning their big day and they got scammed by their wedding planner. So basically, like, there was no flowers. Well, there were flowers, but they were graveyard flowers. I don't know how the bride found this out. Um, But there was no food at the reception. There was nothing planned, nothing done. This woman had basically scammed them out of, I don't even know how much. But it was such a big thing that it made it on, like, both our tabloids and our major newspapers, on our major radio stations. Like, it was this huge thing. A local radio station even paid for them to redo their wedding. Didn't they get the the money back, though? Didn't they prosecute the... Probably. But I just... The woman who did it? It's just this, this thing of as soon as something extraordinary happens at a wedding everybody goes mad everybody goes crazy but Ooh. the real what the fluff part of the story is that the um wedding planner and her husband rocked up at the so-called reception drunk as skunks and the guy offered to buy them takeaways for 2k to make up for it 2k of kfc anyone really yeah that's really, really that's gonna make your day special I don't know, they maybe planned a menu that was supposed to be there if you hadn't nicked all the funds. But I'm just brainstorming here, you know? Just a little bit. (laughs) So, yeah, everyone was up in arms. People were basically calling murder, you know, and it's just, it was, it was... That's insane. Considering everything else that's going on in this country, I think it's kind of understandable that a story like this would then become the highlight because everyone's trying to what's the word not only talk about politics (laughs) yeah trying to talk about something else it's very difficult to find a story every week that's not centered around politics Mm. i mean we struggle so that's why we draw from personal experience so talking about weddings 
mm-hmm. we're sort of having a wedding episode today mm-hmm. but don't run away it's not gonna be boring <laughs> we're not gonna be talking about <laughs> shoes and stuff i want to talk about this phenomenon which i've kind of noticed called wedding madness which is a term that you have coined i have coined this term it is my term but feel free to use it but credit (laughs) me every time you say it so wedding madness ninja dragon 5000 the third reference correctly guys harvard method (laughs) (laughs) we're such nerds um which is different so wedding madness which Mm. i differentiate is different from wedding fever what is wedding fever? So then? wedding fever, the way I understand it, is if you are around someone who is getting married or you're involved in a wedding or something like that, it sort of makes you start thinking about how you would do your wedding. So you kind of get in there and plan what the bridesmaids dresses would look like, what the decor would look like. So what where you're saying you is every it? six-year-old girl has wedding fever. Yes, and then it goes into overdrive when you're actually involved in a wedding. Is there like a pill, a cream, a shot you can take against it? There is Pinterest. You just get it out of your system. (laughs) Because I've never wanted to get married. I still don't want to get married. But one of my closest friends is getting married in July. Mm. And I had a bit of wedding fever. I have my Pinterest board. I got it out of my system. But even I was not immune to wedding fever so wedding madness on the other hand is this bizarre effect that weddings seem to have on people and not necessarily the bride and the groom the bride sort of sometimes more depending on what's going on but the effect that it has on your immediate family and then sort of everybody in the periphery so it's like your extended family and all your friends. People you ain't even heard of. Suddenly, your mama wants to invite this cousin and that cousin. And you're like, who the fuck is these people? That's I don't know where that madness. accent came from. <laughs> That's wedding madness. So, it's basically when you first get engaged. All of a sudden, everybody wants to be invited to the wedding. Like, you barely know these people. You're just sort of acquaintances with them. As soon as it's posted on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, people all of a sudden like, congratulations, where's my invite? And it's like, it hasn't even been 12 hours. Can you calm your tits? <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I, I completely get what you're saying. And I am currently in the midst of it. Having just been involved in a very good friend's wedding this past weekend and now a very good friend's wedding is coming up where I'm a bridesmaid and the in-depth conversations we have about shoes and I'm just like, it's shoes. Nobody cares what's on my feet, but apparently it's important. And again, it is this wedding madness. We were at a bridal expo two days ago and it was bizarre the things that people were like interested in and invested in and and were just crazy about and then that had to be there and yeah and the service providers themselves were kind of like flogging their stuff on you and you're just like i'm not even a bride like what about me dressing all black with my piercings makes you think that i'm here willingly (laughs) i joke it was actually a lot of fun those tasting of champagne though i'm like hey (laughs) um Hell yeah, my bride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that reminds me, guys. Totally check out Heartfelt. It is this really cute project where um, the local community there in Tiger Valley, they create little um, pins or magnets or things out of felt, which you can then use to give as gifts at your wedding. And I'm completely in love. That's so cute. It's made from felt. All the money goes back to them. It's a whole social enterprise. That's really cute. So, so sometimes good stuff comes out of weddings. Sometimes good stuff comes And then sometimes really bizarre stuff starts to happen. So, so bizarre. we will be having an interview with this friend later on in the show. But one of the things that I've kind of noticed is that you can have a fairly sort of chilled family when it comes to maybe sort of religious things or certain family traditions or things mm. like that. Very chilled, very relaxed. So another thing that I've noticed is all of a sudden these random sort of traditions just fall out of the sky as soon as you start getting married. Like if you And know, it's not raining men. Yeah. Although that would be quite gruesome. 
But I digress. Let the parties hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Raspberry <Sorry>. jam. Everywhere. <laughs> you were saying. So, my friend, as far as I'm aware, has never been particularly religious mm. at mm. all. It's the same with my friend. And mention a wedding and she had the the you know the chapel she well not i don't know what you would call it yeah chapel <laughs> the church she wanted to get married in she had that in mind she had the pastor that she wanted to marry them and i was like okay and i'm not sure if you've had this as well if you've seen it with your friend well her and her fiance who are very good friends of ours <laughs> they're like what no whenever a family member brings up the whole getting married in a church thing they like yeah they're just like no like why like it's not their vibe so they're being very like uh, stern for want of a better word strong about that decision but also it kind of it doesn't really go with the venue that they have because they're getting where they're having their reception is where they're getting married it's absolutely beautiful uh we will i will be personally vlogging about it Shh, don't tell the bride um on the day <laughs> you're a bridesmaid mm. as well yes and i'm also a bridesmaid no but first I time can ever i can top you though uh captain chris and i are also going to be emceeing the wedding Oh damn! Yeah, we're They're gonna, gonna be... get some crystal fabulousness. Oh. Mm. oh! So yeah, we're gonna be an MC double team. We're already working on jokes that are gonna be so dead by the time it comes to September. <laughs> 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 but hey, this is this is what you gotta do. Isn't this how they used to do things like in the fifties or when well, when classic Hollywood started? You yeah, kind like, of like you'd have a duo. Like you'd a have a duo, duo but yeah. you'd, most of the time it'd be siblings. Yeah, yeah, the and they like or they would dance always together. like look the same, mm, mm. you know. Or you'd have like a short one and a tall one. Yeah, so like Laurel, Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, guys, we're kicking it old school. But yeah, so it's definitely a thing. I mean, having worked in the wedding industry, what? Let's be generous. Forever. <laughs> Eight years. Okay, since wow. two thousand and six. That's nine years. Oh, I feel so old. Since 2006, and currently doing it like on and off. I mean, I emceed a wedding last weekend. What? So it's. <sighs> people just go out of their minds for this one day. And for what, though? It's so strange because I've noticed that maybe on any other day, if somebody gave you their opinion on what you're wearing, you'd be like, nah, it's cool, it's fine. I like what I'm wearing. It's okay. And they'd be like, okay. Most people. You, awesome. You, most people have, you know, the self-confidence enough to at least be okay with what they're wearing on an you average know, Monday. If somebody gave you a suggestion, maybe like, maybe you shouldn't bake the cake that way. You could have, you know, like, people be like, yeah, no, it's fine. It's cool. You didn't take my suggestion. But in a wedding setting, if somebody suggests something <laughs> and you turn them down, because oh, no. God forbid you have your own ideas of mm. how you want this day to go, it's like you stab them with a spear. Like you pin them against Rusty the ceiling. Spoon. Against the ceiling with your spear of opinions. <laughs> and they just slid down and hit the floor. How dare. <laughs> oh, that's so graphic though. You're talking about raining men. True. I I'm just talking about pulling your relatives to the <laughs> <laughs> and then taking bets What's to see the difference? who slides down first. Again, it's bodies hit the floor. Really, it's raining <laughs> men or women. Let's not be gender specific <laughs> with our Granny Ethel genocide. <laughs> My money's on Granny Ethel. She's light. And she would slide. Oh, I'm sorry. We digress. <laughs> I think everyone has examples of it and if you think that you didn't experience wedding madness or you have not been a part of wedding madness you are lying to yourself it is just i'm so glad that you put a term to it because people have kind of discussed it and like wondered about it and i mean hollywood has made movies about it let's you know let's there's a movie called bride wars exactly and this whole idea of like brides being like Godzilla, but you somebody has to though, because if you don't, your wedding is just going to be what everyone else wants. It gets completely hijacked. Exactly, and it's just 
so once again, it's just people demonizing women for taking a stand and for wanting what they want and not letting anyone else. Okay, I've just I've just subverted this. But that is a point, though. <laughs> I mean, your friend now who's dealing with the wedding, she's constantly sort of making apologies for being a bridezilla, basically because she's not backing down on her decisions of what she wants, mm-hmm. you know, of who to invite. Because I don't know if anybody else has seen this, but now you have to invite auntie so-and-so who you've never met before but is right? really close to the family like my friend going through it she has relatives in europe and she's never really met them they never really come down they don't hang out they sort of talk over facebook but they've barely seen each other face to face but now she has to invite them to the wedding and it's expensive for them to come down do you know what what why i'm laughing though is that our cousin got married two years ago now let's say two years he doesn't even know who i'm talking about but basically like our family is pretty big but we're still kind of tight in the sense that like our parents and their cousins were like they all grew up together so they're all friends that kind of vibe so our cousin got married we only knew about it when her wedding photos like selfies and things popped up on facebook on the day where people were tagging in being like oh my god they're getting married like yeah and I was just like, oh, cool. okay, so who are you getting to do your photos, though? <laughs> and then that, you know, that voice died. Like, I had that thought. And then I was like, actually, you know what? <laughs> it's chilled. Not interesting. I, d- I didn't even really want to go to begin with. But there was just this impulse to be like, why wasn't I invited? And then, you know. and I think you might be onto something there. It's like, if people know you, mm. all of a sudden they're like, this thing takes over <laughs> being like, like i vaguely know them <laughs> <laughs> but you know i had the forethought and the filter to just be like i'm not gonna message her and be like where was my invite you know like things are expensive and we only see each other mostly at funerals so i'm not gonna expect an invite so guys you've been watching the what the fluff show i'm ninja dragon 5000 i'm fluffy your panda Thank you. Uh, we'll see you oh all the links and everything are in the description we didn't forget you forgot <laughs> it's you don't blame us <laughs> what you talking about so everything is down there in the pointy bits and we'll see you next time bye